This computer draws so much power that it trips an electrical breaker every time it's turned on. Like so. And in today's video, we're going to build exactly that with the help of a select few parts. Starting with our platform for today's build, we've got the one and only Threadripper X399 platform. Our motherboard, which we already have installed in our case with a 360 millimeter full cover AIO, currently has an AMD Threadripper 2920X installed. Now, although that CPU only has 12 cores, 24 threads, it rocks a TDP of 180 watts. Now, when overclocked, I bet we can push that well over 200. And for a CPU, that's a ton, and will definitely help with the overall power draw of this system. But the real star of our show today is gonna be our graphics cards, starting with our Power Color Devil 13. This absolute monstrosity rocks four 8-pin PCIe power connectors and when overclocked can draw over 700 watts. This card features two R9 390s and plenty of room for said overclocking, which is going to be perfect for today's build. Now our second graphics card is going to be the R9 295X2. A similar card in the fact that it also has two GPUs on board, although these are slightly lower power R9 290s. And as it has two slightly lower powered GPUs, this card only has a rated power draw of 500 watts. Although when overclocked, we can definitely get a little bit above that. Now if we do some quick napkin math, with our 200 watt CPU, a 500 watt R9 295X2, and a 700 watt Devil 13, that puts us at roughly 1400 watts. Combined with the usual inefficiency of any AC to DC power supply, and the rest of the parts in our system, that'll put us at over 1600 watts max power draw, which puts us easily within the tripping range of your standard 120 volt 15 amp breaker, which is absolutely perfect because that's the goal of today's build, to trip some breakers. Now, none of this would be possible if our power supply tripped before our breaker did. So to make sure all of our parts can reach their peak potential, Silverstone sent over their amazing ST1500 power supply. This is a 1500 watt, 1600 watt peak load, 80 plus silver power supply. The 80 plus silver rating puts us at about 89% efficiency at max load, meaning that our power draw from the wall and through our breaker will be higher than the power consumption of the system which is absolutely perfect for today's build. And to top it all off, how we're going to power these two graphics cards with our four 8-pins and two 8-pins is absolutely janktastic and just adds to the overall aesthetic of the build. The ST1500 claims to have eight 6-pin PCIe connectors and four 8-pins. Now, that's a little disingenuous because the way it achieves that is by having these. It has four PCI Express cables that each have one six plus two and one six pin, meaning that in actuality we get four six pins and four eight pins. But that's not a problem because it also comes with these. These are uh, dual six pin to single eight pin PCI Express power connectors. So hopefully you can envision the, whilst completely safe because built by me, generally dangerous aesthetic of today's build. So what I'm gonna do now is put all this stuff in our case and then we're gonna come back and see if I can trip one of the standard US breakers in that box behind me. So I'm gonna try to get all this stuff in the case which is gonna be awkward and amazing because they are freaking massive and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we've got our system together and it looks fan freaking tastic. This is safe. This is a, this is definitely safe. Don't do it yourself, but it's definitely safe. 
Not for you to do, for me. I, I'm safe. So all I have to do is plug in this comedically thick power cord into this massive power supply. I mean, it is massive. I mean, look how much space it takes up on the inside of the case. And this is a big case. This is the 500DX from Be Quiet. Thank you, Be Quiet. It's freaking massive. So we've got our DVI plugged into our 295X2 into our monitor, which I should probably switch to DVI real quick. And I'm expecting this not to work, but you know, well, I expect of all the things I do. So let's plug this in, which there's no switch, so it will just power the power supply. This thing is thick. And hopefully we've got power, so let's just go for it. It's making noise. None of it necessarily bad noise. That's a good sign. Our I.O. fan is running. Yes, this motherboard has an I.O. fan because there's so much I.O. on it. I'm just looking at the monitor to see if the monitor... I'm looking at one monitor to see if my other monitor gives me a screen. Which I'm guessing it won't because it is... I don't know, maybe. There's a chance this boots. Small one, but still a chance. Oh wait, now it's green. Oh, now I just, ooh. That's not good. It's not supposed to have blue lines going across the screen. Yeah, uh, fun fun fact, uh, whatever this is, this whole, um, the, uh, yeah, that that's not supposed to happen. That is, uh, that's not, it's not normal. That is called artifacting. And it means something is not working properly. Is it still doing it? I bet it's still doing it. Well, unfortunately, uh, I don't know if you could see it, but in case you didn't, uh, yeah, our uh, our R9295X2 is dead. It is, this is death. Basically, I, we did get into Windows and it did recognize both cards. And then as soon as it tried to install drivers, it completely crashed. And now anytime we boot, and it loads into Windows, the driver crashes the entire system, and we get this. So that's some bad artifacting. Probably what happened is either a DRAM chip or one of the two GPUs on the card has died, and that's it. So anytime I try to install drivers on it, it is just going to crash the system, and we get a ton of artifacting while we're booting, as you can see here. Now. We've booted and have loaded drivers on our Devil 13, which is our, you can see here, we've got two R9390s in our system. So I'll have to grab a different graphics card. One second. <sighs> well guys, unfortunately, after a plethora of problems, I was unable to use the R9295X2. And I had to replace it with an R9 Fury X. Now, the R9 Fury X has a TDP of over 300 watts and can absolutely suit the needs of this build. Coincidentally, it actually has more open voltage control, at least in my case, than the R9 295X2, which means we can actually continue our project given that they both have two 8-pin connectors. So with our amazingly craptastic wire setup and a little bit of voltage modding, we were actually able to get this PC to trip a breaker under max load. And with a little bit of creative wire crossing, we can make it so that this PC over 1600 watts when this simple USB is plugged into it, which will cause... Now, if I'm being honest, I really would have liked to use the R9295 X2. It would have really fit the build. Unfortunately, it is broken, but it's... But I don't know how badly the artifacting would have affected performance. Let me explain real quick. See, the drivers for this Devil 13, the R9390X2, conflict with every single other graphics card that I have. I have tried almost all of them, at least one from each generation, aka one with each different driver, and all of them have caused the same driver freeze blue screening windows every time, including the R9 Fury X you see here. And about 90% of the time it's booted, it will uh, blue screen the system. 
So unfortunately, unless I were to have either another 300 series from AMD, so an R9 390, or another double 13, it appears that the drivers for this card that enable Crossfire will only work with this card. My theory is that it is trying to enable Crossfire between these two graphics cards, this one, the 295X2 and the Double 13, which are not compatible in Crossfire with each other as they're from different generations, different VRAM, they do not work with each other. And as it does that, the driver freezes and blue screens windows. That is my theory, and I'm guessing it's doing the same thing with this R9 Fury X. So, this will be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, probably one of the craziest builds I've ever done. This thing is amazing, and I actually plan on using this full PC and chassis for another few builds that are just as interesting, if not even cooler than this one. So, hope you guys kind of enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you next one. Peace.